Welcome to World Book Day here on 90.1 KBBK. That's right, I'm looking for the next play to be in. And where else would you want to be but a library? That's right, we're here for World Book Day and we're celebrating every book that is in this library. We're gonna open up to every topic, everything you can think of, no matter what the book is, I'm gonna grab it because I, for one, love books and anybody that looks at me and says, let's ban a book, let's burn a book or anything else, it's just not appropriate. I'll protect these guys as long as I can. We're gonna take a little walk to my left. We're gonna meet one of the librarians here at Fullerton College and we're gonna start discussing why her and I celebrate World Book Day here on 90.1. KBPK. Shh. We're in the library here at Fullerton College because it is World Book Day. Okay, I'm going to be a little louder because everybody knows I am. Hi, I'm Mark Pavlovich here on 90.1 KBPK. And we're celebrating Book Day and no better place to come than the library. And here today, we're at the library at Fullerton College, and I am with one of the main librarians here. This is Anya. Anya, I'm going to let you say your last name so I don't butcher it. Oh, hi, I'm Anya Sharikova. So that's <laughs> Anya. So Anya, it's book day, and of course, we're at a college library. Of course, when my son grew up and I was a parent, mm -hmm. I used to look at my son and say, grab a book and read. And we were talking in the old days, so I used to look at him and he goes, well, what can I read? And I would say anything. <laughs> you can read a comic book, you can read this, you can read that. I don't care as long as you sit down and read. Yeah. So you get in the habit. Through his years, through high school and even to college, you would find my son with a book in his backpack because he would take the bus to Long Beach State, that's where he went to college at, and read a book on the way. And it also helped him that when he had to do educational reading, he had no problem sitting down and interpreting Mm -hmm. what it is. So today we celebrate World Book Day. And as a librarian, I've got to ask you, what does that mean? Because you're somebody that's in the art sciences of being a librarian and you deal with books all the time. So what does World Book Day mean to you? To me? Well, from my perspective, I think books are uh, now an extra option that people have. It's not, it used to be the books were the only option for, for reading and, and absorbing knowledge and information. And now we have so many different options. And, you know, so some people want to choose others because they're, they're maybe easier accessible or that's what they're comfortable with. Uh, but to me, uh, World Book Day is really promoting this other medium, this other interface for getting information that is uh, sometimes the best way to be able to understand something, to learn something, and really enjoy something, uh, depending on kind of what the, uh, the subject is. And so it's, um, it's a way to celebrate that, that is, it is still kind of a great, a great kind of experience for people. When you look at Book Day and, and we relate it to you being a librarian, when I grew up, you walked in there, you met a person at the desk, you looked and said, what I'm trying to find, they took you over to the card case of Dewey yeah. Decimal, and you basically had to thumb through things till you found the proper number, and then you had to walk <laughs> yeah. down the aisle, and you, you'd be doing this. till finally a librarian would come up and say, and you're looking for oh, what? And you'd say, I'm looking for this book on history, and they'd go, you're, you're in the wrong row. How much have libraries changed from the days that I grew up to where they are now? Well, for one, we no longer use the card catalog with the book, with the cards anymore. Mm -hmm. We have a few of those. We use them um, to make art projects. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all been digitized, right? Um, and here at Fullerton College, we have um, our book catalog together mm -hmm. with our um, digital kind of journal catalog together with our ebook catalog and what you do is you search in uh, type in your search words and you would get suggestions for physical books ebooks journals reports videos all together in one search so most students when they come in and they find that do they tend to lean towards that tactile feel of 
give me a book and do this because I still appreciate the written word on paper. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm that old. Or <laughs> is it where most of the young people that walk into the library nowadays basically will look at that and say, that's really nice, but where else can I find it at? Well, it's hard to say now now because of the pandemic. Everything did switch to digital. We had to. So what people are going to go want going forward is, is probably a preference for what they're used to. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a matter of picking the right source for you for what you need. And it could be that what you need is a tactile book uh, or a source that you can really just dive into and has the background information on what you're researching. Or what you need is something shorter to answer maybe um, one or two very specific questions, in which case perhaps a book is not the right correct source. So that's, that's really been the new evolved job of the librarian is to talk to someone, understand what their information needs are, and to recommend the kind of the best source to for that information need. Anya and I are celebrating book day today here at Fullerton College. We're at an educational institution, and I know this sounds really horrible, but how many teachers refer students to the library that often? Is it, is it a student coming on their own or do you get a lot of, well, I couldn't find my information so my professor, she basically looked at me and said, well, go talk to somebody in the library and they'll be able to help you out. What seems to be the feel nowadays? Is it the young people walking in here or is it, <laughs> gee, I didn't even know libraries existed here at Fullerton College. We have a lot of people that walk in here. Before the pandemic, uh, we had something like 15,000 people a week. Wow. wow. Um, and so it, it is a very popular place. Students study here. Students will go and explore the this, this, this stacks on their own. And yeah, instructors refer students to us. They refer them specifically to talk to a librarian uh, and to help with research. Librarians um, can meet one-on-one -on -one with a student. Either they walk in, we take walk-ins, walk, walk -ins, or they can make an appointment and we talk to them. And, um, you know, instructors find value in that. And so we, uh, we see students all the time. And part of our collaboration with instructors is that we kind of see a mutual role in helping students build their information literacy. And so uh, instructors will do the assignments and the, the kind of the, the, the writing and the analysis. And then we help students figure out the right information for that. And so we kind of uh, mutually support each other's work. You know, when we used to walk in libraries in the old days and you'd look at a librarian and you'd meet somebody behind the counter and you figured they would just find a book for me and that's it. And nobody really looked at librarians like anything but keepers of books. But you being somebody uh, that went into library science, why did you choose that path? And let people know out there, it's just not walking in and saying, oh yeah, I can do this. It, it <laughs> actually is an educational journey to end up being a librarian. This is true. Um, I did not... Um start out as librarian. I started out as user interface designer and researcher. A lot of my coworkers did not start out as librarians either. They came from education or maybe technology. And I think to all of us, it's really been a calling to get getting more people, better information literacy skills out there. I think it's really important these days for anybody really, and, and especially students to understand what is reliable information out there, what is the best information for them for their information need, and you know how to synthesize that and how to question it as well. And it's, it's a lifelong skill. There are, in my opinion, kind of forces out there, propaganda um, and algorithms and just people being greedy who try to undermine what we know and make it harder each year. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's something that we constantly have to be working on. It's an ongoing work. And so I became inspired to do that um, several years ago. And so I switched careers uh, to become a librarian. So since it's National Book Day, and since I have World Book Day, I've got a librarian next to me. And of course, I was just looking at one of my 
authors that I love, mm -hmm. James Lowen, who passed away last year, basically history and things like that, biographies are what I enjoy. You know, he wrote some books like What Your Teachers Did Not Teach You About History and he, you mm -hmm. know, Sundown Towns and things like that. I highly recommend him to look at him as a thing. I gotta look at a librarian because she's around books all day long. <laughs> what do you read and, and what are your favorite areas of genre that you like from book writers? Oh my gosh, um, because I'm surrounded by books all the time, I get this um, benefit. I walk down these, um, these stacks and I'm comfortable with them and I go, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Uh, I was just, I have a few books for you, which I'll go over, but I was just looking through these and I found a book as something about Soviet outlook on American writing. And I'm like, I, what is that about? Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know what genre that is, but she's got a few. Here are my few books. This is one of my favorite books. It's David Foster Wallace is my favorite author. Uh, he does have a downside. He's very verbose. He, he, he's not a, not a short read. So this is kind of his, um, shorter picks of some of, of some of his works, uh, kind of the David Foster Wallace reader. And so I just like looking through it and going back to it and picking out something and putting it down. Short story writer or what? Um, so he wrote everything. So there are short stories, there are novels. So his novel Infinite Just is twice the size of this very not small book. Yeah. Um, but his favorite story of mine is um, a supposedly fun thing I will never do again, um, which is his experience going on a cruise. Uh, and he did this thing which I'd never seen before and I've realized I loved, which is tell half the story, even more half than, more than half the story in um, a little... Uh, um, like in yes? Footnotes, footnotes, footnotes. footnotes. Okay. So he'll, he'll see right here, yeah. you can be like, this is uh -huh. the story and this and is the footnote. footnote. Um, and, and, you know, I really enjoyed the going back and forth and the, you know, it's, it's a really funny story about going on a cruise and his experience with taking a cruise and I guess in the nineties sometimes. So. Very cool. Um, but other things, I love promoting this book. This is the cartoon introduction to statistics. I am the mathematics librarian. And we, you know, we, we, we get this common, like, oh, math is boring, math mm -hmm. is not for me. And you know, this, is, this is one of the benefits of books is it can take something that is supposedly dry and make it fun. And this is just a lot of different cartoons about stats and statistical concepts. And so I like promoting it to math instructors in particular and saying, hey, if you have someone that's not So any age inspired. range for this book or is this basically a college book? I mean, and I, I don't mean that, you um, know, as a, but I mean, you know, could I hand this, could I hand this to a junior high child and have sure. them? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, you can. And, you know, it's, it, I would say it's, for the most part, any age or age, of course, not small children, but... The idea is to get inspired by math. And Very nice. You can you can always be inspired no matter how old you are. <laughs> Clayton Bennett Payne, maybe you want to introduce this at your uh, school down in San Diego. That's my nephew who teaches okay. math, music, <laughs> history, sociology. He's one of those guys, so he loves books. Yeah, so we we have yeah a few a few of these are fun math books. Um, oh, you found a you found an encyclopedia that the radio guys can understand. I mean, Ryan and Joe might be able to get their way halfway through that. Yeah, Super Mario. There's one thing um, people think you know encyclopedia is super dry, and it's supposed to be dry in some sense. It's 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 a very um, short summary information of of various topics, but. You know, it all depends on what the topic is. That's true. That's and true. we have a lot, and it depends on what it is. Um, this one's my favorite because it flies off the shelves. I mm -hmm. put it out, and it's gone. It's gone. Um, but, there, you know, there are others. There's an encyclopedia of wine for anybody that's interested, and, you know, um, all kinds of stuff. So I love these for the simple reason that if you learn enough out of one of these, you go someplace and you'll throw that bit of knowledge out. So, I mean, why she's telling you to get this book and somebody will go, I never knew that. And people look at you astonished and like, wow, did you know? Like you're smart. Encyclopedias, boy, they take up the intelligent factor when you just meet people. Yeah, encyclopedias. <laughs> love them, love them. 
And then, of course, the fun ones. Um, we started um, doing a lot of kind of book promotion. Of course, these are tend to be for smaller children. But, you know, if you read it, it's kind of uh, more about Pixar's... Um, sorry, let me hold this up. This is the pop-up celebration of Pixar. Um, and you can, you can see it's, it's more about Pixar's history. And so if you were doing a research project on Pixar, this would be, you know, oh, fairly reasonable. Incredible book, yeah. Incredible. To, and um, the other kind of thing I like about this and pop-up books in general uh, is the, the tactile feel of it, right? It used to be that you, you like the pages, but they're all small, uh, similar, and this one's taking that to the next level. Uh, so, you know, as, as technology evolves online, technology in books evolves. And mm -hmm. this, is, this is a fantastic example of kind of some of the more out there uh, book technology. Yeah, I like that book. I think that's great. And for any age, you would find that interesting. I, when we talk about books and, and students coming in here, we all know through the years, you being somebody who got educated, Ryan Osborne, who's still in school, getting his master's degree, the one big thing we always feared was what are my books going to cost for class oh this is just gonna this is gonna devastate me i can't afford it so where does the library step in for those students who can't afford to buy those outrageously priced books that some professors ask for is there something that the library does to help those students well there's there's a there's a variety of options okay. right um the traditional one was that instructors can take their book and allow us to uh, put it on reserve and then their students can check it out. It's a very specific class, so a very specific book, and that's been a popular program. But recently, especially with the um, all over the state of California, it's been a big push to do more open educational resources. And that is when an instructor uses a book that is free already. Um, and it is online and it can be remixed so an instructor can go and say, okay, I actually don't love this whole book. I like 50% of it, but I like the other 50% of this other book and you can combine them. Um, that's actually something that I've done with my own class. I teach an information literacy class and I just combine bits of this book and this book and this book and all of those books are free. And so the program is the open, uh, educational resources program is to kind of get instructors to either use those books or to create the books where they're not, uh, we're not, they're not available. And instructors just are all over it. Of course, everybody doesn't want to burden people with mm -hmm. extra, extra costs, especially if it's going to be an impediment to their education. So, okay. Well, we're here at Fullerton College Library. We're celebrating World Book Day. And when you get a chance, come on down to the library, take a tour of it. Not only will you find an enormous amount of information on every shelf you pass by, but they've also got exhibitions. We're gonna take a little walk after our interview here and show you the rest of this library, what they have to offer. I think that's the other thing that's fun about the library is you, mm -hmm. you think it's only about books. And then behind Anya and I, there are plaques for people that have worked here, what yep. they've done at the college. Down in another room, we're going to see an exhibition of dolls by Mr. Sorensen. Yep. They're over there. You know what? I got to ask you to sum it up very quickly as we come to our end of our interview. What's the joy for you of working in a library? The joy? Um, it, it really is being able to connect with people and help them find the information that they need quickly um, and reliably. And you know what? It sounds like, you know, my job could be done by Google, but increasingly it is becoming harder and harder to do so. So being able to come to someone and say, hey, this is, you need this, here's how we do it, and then to teach them to do it. Uh, you mentioned earlier that, um, you know, we pick books and give it to people. We don't do that anymore. We teach them how to find that information, and that's just been... Amazing. Yeah, it used to be mind-boggling when I was a kid because somebody would say, go down there, and then you'd look through 30 books and know you had to write a report, and at the end of the day, you found nothing. Yeah. This is a young woman that if you're here at Fullerton College, if you're here in the Orange County area and you need to work on a project, come over to Fullerton College Library, walk in here, find somebody like Anya that says, hey, look, I need a little help. They will take you in the right direction. 
yeah, we're celebrating World Book Day, but it's because of young people like her on my left that World Book Day is still being celebrated because of her, because of the library, because of these. That's why we're here today. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for letting us. We're going to take a walk around your library and look at a few more things before we call it an end to World Book Day here on 90.1 KBPK. Thank you, Anya. It's been Thank a you. pleasure. So let's go take a walk and see what else they have here at Fullerton College on 90.1 KBPK. So this is part of the walkthrough that we were discussing earlier. This is Lewis Sorensen's doll collection. And Lewis Sorensen was a member of the National Institution of the American Doll Artists. And this is what he's done. He left it for Fullerton College. If we go to the very end of this, and there are some of the molds that he had, some of the things that he puts out for the clothes that he made. He made everything from scratch at the very end. This is all the president doll collection that he gave to Fullerton College. So as we take a walk down, you'll see every president of the United States up to, I believe, Ronald Reagan in this collection. So when you come over and you're looking for the history of Fullerton College, well, you can go through the years. As a matter of fact, if you come here, let's say first graduating class, I should be number 10 on here, but I didn't make it through that semester. This gives you the running history of Fullerton College all the way through 2010s. It gives you performing arts, immigration, civil rights, many of the college first that you think about. And then as we go to the other side of the wall, you get to see the pictorial history of Fullerton College. So this will take you through the history to sports, music, the music out there, homecoming queen, there's Buzzy hanging up there. There's one of the first cheerleading groups, one of the first groups that ever went to Fullerton College. Fullerton College, first women's basketball team there. And actually, like Ryan Osborne brought up to me, he said, there's the female football team at Fullerton College as you go through here. So this is another place that if, hey, you need to do something on the history of Fullerton College, you come over to this section, sit down and look at what it has to say, and you too can say, wait a minute, he was the first student that ever went here at Fullerton College. We'll keep moving on, take a look at a few more things here on 90.1. KBPK as we celebrate World Book Day.